Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, part seven now of this um, of this month-long build of the Takum 135th Mark IV tank as a German captured vehicle. Um, so if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do so. Or sorry, not like, but subscribe. Please subscribe and hit that notifications bell. That way you'll hear about all my upcoming stuff. Um, there's a lot going on with this channel. I'm fairly new. Still learning the, the video side of things, um, filming, lighting and all that. I know my lighting needs improving. But uh, yeah, but there's, a, there's a lot going up. And um, I'm not going to tell you how to do anything, but I'm going to try and offer some helpful tips, particularly to those uh, newer modelers amongst us. So where are we now? In my last few videos, I've talked about lighting and how I need to improve. I had some good feedback, thank you, on camera height. And so this is something I'm trying now. Um, I've been asked to get the camera a little lower I think is what I get what I'm getting so I've put the camera a little lower um, so here ready is my hands clamp some pegs you can see I mean this this model is what this is 23 centimeters long and there you go at sort of a few inches off the bench I can get it full in the screen so I think this is what you're looking for which is which is fine because it means the phone is basically right in front of my mouth so you're gonna at least the sound will be okay um, if you want to listen to me that is just waffling on about a little more crap but anyway um, the other concern is lighting now I've got another desk lamp to my right so normally I've got a lamp overhead which is looking directly down and I've got a desk like a desk but a desk a desk light to my right which um, is going in for the right and I can see what it does it does make it brighter, but it just produces shadows. So, um, I don't know, do you like it with or without? The thing is, this is quite a tall model, so if I took this away, and I was just working on thin, smaller stuff on the bench, I think it's better. But with this taller stuff, I think it's better to leave it off. So, um, yeah, tell what you think in the comments. I'll leave it off for now, and then see what you think. Uh, so yeah, this, this light here, I generally put directly above and um, that way you don't get too much of the way shadows. But I mean, the thing is as well, if you have the light too low down to get better light, it doesn't light up around the camera. So then when I come in and do the detail shots like this one here, you get this, which is not as good. So I have to have the light above. What I really need, I think, is some um, 27 lights. But I'd be really interested, any advice from anyone experience in this lighting thing, I'd be really interested to uh, to know what you what you guys do, um, because it's it's uh, to me it's the, it's the biggest mystery of all. It's a it's a complete pain in the ass to be honest. But um, and the other thing is, you sort of go to the shops and you see these lights and they're like a hundred and twenty pound, and you see something that looks the same and you think is the same spec on Amazon and it's like forty pounds. And, I just don't want to go and buy something for £150 and then find I could have got it on Amazon for 30 quid. you know? I'm not tight. If I have to spend 150 I will. But I don't want to spend 150 and then find I could have got it somewhere else for 30 You know what I mean? So, um, anyway, enough of that. Where are we with this build? Now, it's now Sunday morning. It's, what is it? It's just gone 10 o'clock. It's 10.07. I'm uploading another video on the Fokker Triplane as we speak. Um, part six of this has just gone up last night. It's just sort of gone live this morning. It's over an hour long, um, and it's you know it's it's, uh, it's it's full of some good stuff. And you can just fast forward through the dribble if you like and, and pick up on the good stuff. But I think it shows that this kit with these all these parts to assemble these um, outriggers, should we call them these hull sides? Uh, well, it's. Um, don't do it as the instructions say. You need to do this. You need to clamp it together because if you left all the glue to dry on one side, I don't think you get it back together again. So, and you you can actually get the wheels in without taking it apart. So, um, so yeah, you can actually glue all this together. Just don't glue the very ends. And then when it comes to putting the wheels in, you'll see you can just literally just pull the ends slightly apart and let the wheels come easily. So, in fact, I don't know if I. I put that like that and clamp it there, will it come in? Yes, it will. So even if you glue it, I think you'll get the wheels in and out. Um, the other thing to watch for, I noticed, is... I don't know if I can show this. When you put the wheels in, you clamp it. If you look, you can actually, by, 
by biasing the sides up and down to each other, you can actually force the wheels to go out of line. So when you finally glue this together, you need to be careful of that, just in case I forget to say anything. So let's um, unclamp this. I think this is the left side, this one. Yes, it is. So <clears throat> let's get it all apart. Um, and as we can see, that's all in there, all glued up. Um, and like we said before, there's absolutely no need to put these wheels in at all because as soon as you move the bloody thing, it falls apart. I've got to add this gear I forgot about. Um, it's not going to affect the build of the model at all, but I just need to make sure it's in there. There we go. So that's in there now. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the left side, and now these are all glued up and solid. Um, I really would advise anybody doing this kit does it as as I've done here because um, I think if you don't, you're going to end up with uh, with a pretty bad model, all out of shape and everything. So let's get this one unclamped. Um, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. And as you can see on here, on this bolt, you can see the mould line. Yeah. I don't know if you can catch that in the camera angle. If you look at this bolt, there's a mould line. You can mould, like a mould seam all around it. What I do, um, I take my scalpel and I'm just going to scrape the end of it to remove that seam and taking my tammy extra thin I'm just going to lightly brush all over it and down the sides as well yesterday we had uh, the wind trying to blow the house down and rip the gates apart today we've got rain trying to flood us out so um, yeah good old England Now, I think you'll agree, that is one way to improve the look of things that are moulded with a mould seam. So I hope you can see that there. It's, um, yeah, I think it makes a, a, quite a difference. Is the camera going to focus? There we go. It makes quite a difference to the overall appearance. So, uh, okay, I think that's better. Um, there's something I really do need to sort out because it does absolutely does my head in this lighting situation. So anyway, I've, I've just glued um, that part there in that, uh, that C2, you can see all the instructions there. So um, now it's tip time again. Uh, if you remember, I didn't make too much fuss about these um, these joints around the uh, sorry the nibs around the outside of the around the outside of the hull. So what I need to do, what we need to do is sand them uh, and get them flat. So <clears throat> I need to assemble this back together now without any wheels in it. You can't do this after you've put the wheels in because they'll be in your way. So I'm going to stick a clamp on here, like so. What's that clamp is tipped over. Oh come on. I've used these for um, fiberglass, these clamps, so they're, uh, they're not the best looking clamps in the world, but they still work. The purpose of a clamp is to clamp after all. So uh, I'm going to clamp this end together here. Be careful not to knock that photo etch. So there we've got those, those held together. And what I can do now is take this, actually I think I'll take this sponge, this, um, this lovely flory sanding stick. I think it's 240 on one side, 1200 on the other. I, I call it coarse and fine. So and I'm just going to lightly sand, in fact I will use this one because it's coarser. These are for models for sale, they're lovely. And I'm just going to sand until the nubs disappear but also if you look there's like a mould seam around the ends and I want to get rid of that as well. Now if you do each one individually 
you could end up with uh, a radius or an angled face. Doing them together like this means you're pretty much guaranteed they're going to be square. Um, I also do this, if I'm doing track wheels, like if I'm doing a, a Sherman or something, put the wheels onto the um, bogies before you sand them, before you sand the seam off, and then you're guaranteed to have two sort of wheels that are square to each other rather than risk having, you know, sort of two bulge tire, the two bulge tire look, if you like. So yeah, just go around like this and sand until you get rid of that mold seam. It should be any minute now that I'll be gone. Do me a favour guys, if any of you are on um, Flory models, uh, I, I don't go on there anymore. I, I, when he changed his format with um, having two people on there and stuff, I didn't I didn't much like it, so I uh, I gave up my subscription. But um, yeah, I like Phil. He's, he's okay. He's a, he's a good guy. And uh, I've had some good laughs with him in the past. But um, yeah, just uh, let him know that I'm um, doing these videos now. And please also let him know that I'm promoting his sanders because, uh, you know, I, I do tend to moan a lot and say about bad kits and bad engineering and poor design and it should have been done this way and it should have been done that way but credit where, it's, where credit's due I will give credit um, you know even like with model collect with the uh, B52 which is accuracy wise oh, oh dear um, <laughs> but you know when they get something right I will credit them for it uh, it's like this, and this is a lovely kit, but I think the way they've designed this, these sides going together is, um, well, let's just say they should go and have a chat with Tamiya. I think that'll pretty much cover it. So, yeah, going round, I'm going to do this one, I'll do the other one off camera because you don't want to sit and watch this. But you can see that what I'm doing is taking away these mould seams and... Yes, I know it's coarse and I know it's leaving sandy marks behind. But I'll deal with that in a second. And taking away these these seams will just I'm not sure how much it's gonna appear um, enhance the overall appearance because I think most of this is gonna be covered by the tracks. But I believe I'll have to look at my references, but I believe that these areas would be um, sort of rubbed back and almost polished metal. Not polished as in chrome, but you know, like um, the paint rubbed off and steel constantly rubbing upon steel, which kind of gives you a bright finish. So the last thing you want on there is nibs and mould seams if you're going to be. Um, Putting metalizers on it because it'll look bloody awful. Right, so that's the mold seams gone. Now I've got to deal with this finish. So I'm taking my Flory sanding stick. This is uh, 240 grit. And I'm going to go round like this, all over it. Just, this is just literally to remove the sanding marks. I'm not pushing down. If you push down, like I told you before, you'll end up rounding the edges off. I'm just going to go all over like this. And then up and then the back here. I'll tell you what, there's one thing I've learned about this, guys, and uh, if you ever do YouTube videos, you'll have the same. One of the hardest parts is doing this and staying on camera. Because you keep wanting to do this. And uh, I think I've got that. I think I've learned that bit. So you can teach an old dog new tricks, and by God, I'm an old dog. <laughs> so, done that now, and I go on to the smooth side. I think he says it's, um, on the packet, I think he it says it's 1200. I never tend to worry about the numbers that people give. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the right tool for the job. I mean, who can tell me the size of a number one versus a number two versus a number three screwdriver? You use the screwdriver that you need for the job and if you haven't got the right one you make the wrong one fit you know and um that's what we do you know with, with tools and, and modeling i mean i don't know if any of you know but if you've ever got an odd sized nut or bolt you want to undo and you've got a ring spanner that's too big if you put an allen key 
between get a tight fit and allen key to go into one of the slots in the in the ring spanner because there's 16 slots in the ring spanner and um and uh eight flats on the sorry six flats on the nut and 12 sorry, sorry there's 12 grooves in a in a spanner and there's six flats on a nut or a bolt so if you stick an allen key into one of those grooves in the spanner against the flat on the nut or the bolt and it's a tight fit you will be able to undo it you can undo a nut or a bolt obviously it's not graunched up or corroded in with a spanner that's too big there's no chip for today um, yeah if you're ever stuck in a, in a hole that's what you can do so here we go polishing now with the smooth side you know what I was saying was everybody goes on about the uh, the grit you know the thing is when this was new this was 1200 and this was 240 it's not anymore um, a new 1200 is a lot coarser than an old 1200 or even one that's had been used for a while so you know when I'm polishing paint on a car I'll use 2000 grit and uh, after about 10 minutes it's, it's almost like just using plain paper with no grit in it at all because what happens is you, you knock the tops off the grits are basically glued like a load of bits of sand if you like I know it's not sand but it's basically glued to the um, glued to the paper and obviously you get some bits that sit on top and when you first use it you knock those bits off and then you get down to all the grits that are at the bottom while I think of it I've just put this together to see what it looks like and if you remember I did mention before about painting and you can see here um, this is the back end of the tank if you were to just leave it like this and then try and paint the whole model there is a chance that you will well it's definite you won't get the paint all the way in behind there for a definite and you won't get paint up the sides here for sure um, so there is always a chance that if you're models at a show or in a cabinet with a fantastic light or something somebody will just catch it on the right glints and this tank out of plastic bang it's going to come out and it'll, it'll show um even sometimes in photographs i've done it myself where i photographed a model on a forum and i've put the post up the picture up and it's like a picture of a cockpit and you can almost see through the painting areas and it's the camera's light and focus and everything that's doing it you can't see it with the naked eye when you look at it on the on the on the computer screens or blown up you know like this big it's kind of oh my god so um yes yeah, so just remember if you're building this model or any uh, variant of it no matter what version or manufacturer or whatever get some paint in those areas like on the back on here so i'm going to paint here and i'm going to paint all around here and in behind there and everything with a dark gray um just to get some colour in there other than this tan plastic and that way when the light picks it up it'll just look like a shadow. So on with the wheels. Um, just looking at this addendum sheet they're telling you here that these are the instructions and they're telling you to glue the wheels on here but in the addendum they're saying don't glue them on. Um, I'm going to see what sort of fit they are because if, if they don't stay on on their own when it comes to fitting these wheels in, can you imagine you've got the spindle with the wheels not glued on, one either side, and you're putting the spindles into the tank and not gluing them in, and then you've got to assemble those two sides together to sandwich it in. Can you imagine trying to keep all that together? And really, does it need to all move? I mean, it's nice to have workable tracks. I, I can't see the point on this one, actually, to be honest because workable tracks will give you an accurate sag or posability but this tank doesn't have any movement it has no suspension so you know having workable tracks is okay but I'm gonna have it for this build because I'm gonna show you guys how to do it or how I do it should I say but um yeah I think if these spindles fit loosely into the whole sides then there is no need to not glue those wheels on sorry let's say that again in English I don't see the point in, gluing, in not gluing the wheels on if the spindles are going to turn freely in there. And at the end of the day, the wheels don't really need to turn anyway. It would be handy for painting them. 
In fact, I'll probably paint all this area in here and paint all the wheels before I put it together anyway. So, um, yeah, there's one thing I can't stand. You may have picked this up by now. I can't stand building a model and then finding afterwards I've got a bit of bare plastic exposed where, you know, when you painted it, the wheel was like this and then afterwards it's turned and that part of the wheel was up inside the wheel well or something when you painted it, so now you can't see it. Yes, uh, yeah, so you couldn't see it then, sorry, but now you can. So um, anyway, more, more about that when we get to it. So I'm gonna go on and assemble these. Um, so what we need to do, we've got our eight parts here, two sprues, still sealed in the bag as you can see. Open the bag. And then, weird plastic, wrinkly, wrinkly, noisy plastic. I'm gonna throw that bag away because this sprue won't be going back in the box. So we've obviously got one sprue for one side and one for the other. So, A1, which is these, we need 16 of them, and we've got 16 there. And then A3, we need 11 of them, and we've got 11 there, so there's no spares. So we'll get the, I think we'll start with the 11s, sorry, the A3s, which there's 11 of, and we'll get in with our side cutters, get in as close as we can. And then this may actually help us. I'll show you why in a sec. And when I say help us, I mean leave a little bit of the, um, the nub on there. Nib, nub, whatever you want to call it. So this is where these Tamiya cutters come in great because you could just get in so close. I need to be careful that none of them flick off and get lost in the carpet. So they're off, and if we look at them, we can see that we've got a little bit of the nub left on there. Now that might work in our favour, because when I get the wheels off, so it's A4 on them. So let's just cut these two off here. Now I know I haven't cleaned them up yet, but it may be... You can put them on. You are kidding me. I don't believe this. This is A3, this is A4. As per the instructions, as per the addendum here, and they're telling you not to glue this on. Look at the fit. Just look at that. Can you imagine trying to keep this together? Yeah, and put this on the model. Oh, for God's sake. So, what I would suggest is these are glued on and butted up tight to that face because otherwise they're gonna be all over the place. Honestly, I'm gonna wanna check this out. This is ridiculous. Just checking, I have got this right, haven't I? A4, yeah. A4 and A3. So those holes are 2.04 millimeters, two millimeters the diameter, and these are 1.65, 1.63. So it's 0.4 of a millimetre difference. They are having a laugh. So if this is how Tacom works, I mean, it's not so important with this because they're all so hidden away. It's like a, like a church or they're buried. But honestly, look at the, look at the bloody slop. Look how much movement you get. I mean, really look. Oh dear. So I'm going to have to glue them on um, to keep them parallel, otherwise it's just going to be all flopping about. Um, and you'll absolutely lose the will to live when you try and assemble it. 
Um, yeah, because I know that, I remember doing the Tammy one, there's a certain order you have to work in when you put these in, otherwise you can't get them all in together. I think you have to sort of put two together, put them in, put two together, put them in, because they kind of interlock like tiger wheels do. So let me have a little play with this. Oh, hang on, you want to, I'll show you how I clean these wheels up. So what I basically do, I go in, now this is unfortunate because what they've done, instead of having a small nib on the outside, the nib actually goes on into the roller part, but, and that is facing out. So I'll just go like that and take that off. Um, I'm not gonna use any sanding sticks on these at this time because um, I'll do it when they're actually assembled up. And I'm not gonna bother cleaning these up because the, they fit like a prick in the top out anyway. So um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll glue them up and then when they've gone off, then I can hold it, it'd be easier to hold it and sand it and everything. And um, if you make sure that when you put it together, the nubs align, then you can get them to go top and bottom. So the tracks will hide one side and the, the chassis will hide the other. So I'm gonna go on and get on that done. Um, actually, while you're on the camera, let's see what these other ones are like. Let's see how bad these are. What I'll do first is, uh, <laughs> I'll measure it first. So in this one, we've got a, Two millimeter hole and 1.6 so again we've got 0.4 clearance on them so they're gonna go in there like a prick in the top hat look at that so you've got all that play brilliant just one quick thing to note guys these wheels the uh, smaller wheels a2 they're different on either side so you can see that one side has a the center, if you look at the center bore, the spigot around that bore, that's plain. And that one has a groove in it. The groove goes to the outside on both wheels. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind when you're assembling it. Make sure you get the the groove to the outside. There they are. You can see that there. Yeah. And also with these you can you can look at them and you can get them kind of central so that'll help a bit so as you can see here done one side 11 of those 16 of those um i need to let them go off now so i can sand them on if you remember what i was saying earlier you know now you see you can pick these up like this and sand them and you'll guarantee that the wheels will be square to each other across those faces instead of across those faces instead of being like two bulge tires or even worse having two you know angled tires if you like and not tires they're wheels but you know what i mean um so i'll show you that but before i can do that they need to go off so i may as well go on and uh, do the rest of these really haven't i which is um ecstatic just so much fun it's uh yeah it's great with these, um, I'm just going to take this uh, skinny stick and just remove this nub as good as I can and that is going to do. Um, if I wanted to do this better, I'm going to use the coarser side actually to get it off. If I wanted to do this better, I could use this, this blue skinny stick, which would do it. So um, yeah. Up to you really, but um, I'm certainly not going to make too much fuss about uh, having these wheels perfect because, like I say, at the end of the day, sanding sprue nibs off a, off a wheel is hardly enjoyable, especially this many wheels, and, you know, really quite pointless when you can't see it. To me, this is the same as if you were removing ejector pin marks from the inside of a wing half. You know, it's, uh, it's just bloody pointless. So there we go. So I'll cut off that. Oh, yes, but you want to see me do. This is what I was talking about with these um, halves. If you hold them like this and sand across both, then you can sort of guarantee that one's come apart. Great. Uh, <laughs> you can guarantee that you're going to get 
the wheels square to each other. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pick up this coarser stick and just rub across like this. Of course, you end up with no bloody skin left on your fingers. But you can see that in doing that, you're ending up with both wheels sanded. It'd be great to stick these up and lay them do this, but um, because the axles, the, the spindles are so thin, they'd probably snap off. It's good to put it up between centres, perhaps. But um, like I say, really, I don't think it's worth it. And there we go. So we can And there you have it, you can see that the oops you can see that the wheels are sanded and, and square. La da 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 my fingers are getting sore. My god, this is a bore. Oh Christ, what a chore this is. I don't enjoy this at all. When every few seconds they fall from my fingers when I try to sand them straight. It's at times like this when I'm sat here alone doing a boring job. I wish, I so, so wish I had a mate. Here you go, look, flying across the bloody table. Oh dear, how many times have I picked these up off the floor and tried to rescue them before the dog gets to them? Oh. Still, this is the last one. So this is, what's that? 32, this is the last of 64 bloody sanding down pairs of bloody wheels oh god right that is that and now my fingers are raw I could rob a bank and I've got no bloody fingerprints left so there we are that's those wheels done so we can look at start putting together that starting to put it together now I can't even bloody talk Right, so we can see in the structures we've got two types, we've got A and B. Uh, the straight ones are A, the ones with the flanges on are, sorry, the flanged ones are A, the straight ones are B. So here we can see, we go across on the bottom and we've got A, B, A, B, A, B, B, A, B, B. So we've got to assemble them the same as that. So the, I'm trying this for the first time guys, I haven't done this, I haven't done a dummy run. So that one's going to go in there, and then this one goes between them. Oh, this isn't so bad. It doesn't seem so bad. Like that. And then another B. Then another A. Then two Bs. Two Bs or not two Bs. Then another A. And then another two B's. And another A. And I think, looking at this now, I think I'm going to paint these before I fit them because I'm looking at this now and let's see if I can do this without it falling apart. Um, it's the one, it? it's this one. <clears throat> well, this is going to be fun. Putting these together is going to be a right laugh. But if I could just hold it like that, you can see the wheels through those holes. Well, it hasn't got on the outside. What I'm a bit concerned about is seeing the brown plastic through those holes. I think what I might do is stick these wheels into some blue tack or into a bit of balsa wood or something and paint them. Just give them a part and then paint this area in here. Um, so that when we, when we look inside those holes we don't see tan plastic. So what I'm doing here guys, I want to paint these wheels. So I've got my old 
block of wood which I use for painting as you can see and I normally stick parts in blue tack but I've just had an idea I thought, I thought I'd measure those spindles <clears throat> and they're all 1.35 millimeters diameter so if I drill some holes in this piece of wood at 1.3 I should be able to just get these and slot them in there for painting Stick those in there like that. And then I can get the bright deep brush, get them all painted, and then take them out, turn them around, and uh, job done. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I've got the, um, the wheels mounted. This is half of them on a piece of balsa. Again, all drilled out, and uh, there's the other half into a piece of wood all drilled out. So the idea here, I'll spray them, <clears throat> going from the sides as well, and then uh, once they're dry, I take them out, turn them over, and do the other sides. And this is just as I've said before. I just want to make sure you don't see any tan plastic. Um, I'd hate it if when, I, when this is finished and I put some finished videos up, and you, as it turns around or something, you see bloody bright brown plastic shining out. I'm also going to paint the um, areas that I said that are going to be uh, hidden once you once you build the rest of the tank up like inside here, inside here because you can see through there just in case I mean if you can see down the side of the tracks or through them or whatever you know I'm just going to ensure that I get basically in areas that are going to be more difficult to get to once the tank's assembled or even impossible to get to once it's assembled so I've made up a mix. I've got here um, Tamiya XF63, which is German grey. Uh, I was going to use XF69, but I've got loads of this German grey, so um, I thought I'd use that instead. It's rough, looks the roughly 50-50 with the um, AK high compatibility thinners. Uh, I've started making my own thinners, but I've yet to get some um, glycerin. So I've made my own thinners here for using for brush cleaning, which is basically screen wash, alcohol and water and um, that works great as a as a cleaning agent but apparently it's not a good idea to use screen wash for paint because the ammonia works against the paint or something I'm not a chemist I don't know but um yeah I'm certainly fed up with paying a fortune for thinners just for doing rough jobs like this so um just give them a quick blow off my normal go-to thinners is um is extra lovely thinners from guns it smells just use it in the booth and put the extractor on um, I haven't got the extractor on now to make this video. I'm just going to quickly spray these over. It's only 50 psi and it is only AK thinner, so it's not deadly or anything. So, um, anyway, 15 psi. I had I watch a Revolution 0.3 needle, 50 50 mix. Here we go. So, just gently dust some on here. Okay, so there's the first lot of painting done. We can see that the, uh, you know, the back end. Is all well covered now so when I actually um, that's an outside piece when I fit this on now we will see um, that in that area there uh, there's no tan plastic showing so when I spray camera or whatever it will be um, will be sorted one other thing to consider guys when you're going forward think about like areas like this this is on the outside of the tank underneath and obviously spraying that would be no problem at all but you wouldn't be able to get into that area there because the floor will be there so you wouldn't get in that corner so it's worth just blasting into that corner now while you've got it off well, while you can all right so um what i need to do is take these wheels out and start turning them over so now we can uh, paint the other side of these. You can hear in the background I've got the um, extractor going. I've been in the booth to do the amount of painting but I don't want to stick the camera in the booth for fear of um, over spraying also because of the noise. Right the paint is dried now and it's time to put these together. So if we look in the instructions we can see that we've got it shows us how to actually fit the wheels um, 
because you've got the, the two types there, A and B. So it shows us they're how to fit them. But the first thing I noticed is the side you put them in, they fit fine. They go in lovely. But on this one, they don't fit. So I've got a 1.4 mil drill and I'm going to drill out all these holes. Right, they're all drilled out now. So um, now we can see that when we fit these, they, they actually go in and stay there. Um, I've also noticed something else when I was trying to um, dummy build all this, that the, the reason they don't want you to glue the wheels on is because the, the smaller wheels you see here on the left are so close together, so they need to come apart. And I've managed to tweak some of mine and get them apart. So if you do build this kit, glue one wheel on, on the axle like on these small ones glue one wheel on but not the other it just needs to, it's just a touch it needs to come apart to allow them to fit together it will all go together if you uh, mash it all up I should think oh one other thing once you get this back together and all the wheels are in there <clears throat> there is some oh, wait a minute. there is no way you're gonna get glue on this edge here and it takes so long to position and get everything clamped up that any glue you put on there beforehand is going to dry. So what I've done is I've drilled some holes in here, which is inside the main hole, so it's not going to get seen. And then you can get the, the brush if you're extra thin and get it through there, like this. You can get it through that hole and onto that flange. So, see that again? You can get it through that hole and onto that flange. So that was just a little, um, little something I did there. So I'm going to get on now and start putting these wheels on. We start with an A, and then we've got one of these which is tightly clamped up, so tightly um, up against the next wheel. So I'm going to put one of these on that actually comes apart, then another A, A, and then a plain one up here. Here comes the fun bit, putting all this together. Um, yeah, it won't go together well if you try and put it upside down. Right? So I'm going to line up one of the holes at the front. So now I can see it all starting to go together. Right, so that one's gone in, and that's all lined up. One's four out there, we're not going to worry about that. So I'll get a big clamp on here, clamp this together so it can't come apart. Right now, that one that fell out, I'm going to leave for now. So we start to move around here. It's, you can see it starts to go in, and then you'll get one little resist and another one there that's resisting now can you imagine trying to do this if all of those wheels and all of those axles were all loose I mean this would be an absolute and utter total nightmare right so in there so that one's gonna go into there and then up there and then this one's gonna go into there and then up there and there we are so let's hold that together I know it sounds awful guys it's all clipping and clacking and everything but believe me I tried this once because I've been lying to you. I did the other one before I came on camera. I thought I've got to suss that process before I come and embarrass yourself. So that's what I was doing. Um, so yeah, there we go. So I can now easily glue this here. And I'm going to go way overboard with the glue because I don't want this coming apart. So 
I can put plenty of glue down in here. And down in there. You can see that oozing out of there. Close peg on there. Now these here. Down in that joint there, and on that flange, bulldog clip on there. Same on this one. Get some glue on that joint down in there. Down in that joint there on that flange. Get a bulldog clip on there. So that's holding that together. Let's quickly take this plug out of the way. Plug peg on me. Go down on there. And get another peg in there. So now the centre of that is held together. So that's not going to go anywhere. So what we do now is get a clamp on here. get my glue, get plenty of glue, really shaking it so that it's a huge bead on the end of the brush and then just go down in there and then do it again here in that hole and this is getting the, the glue into that joint otherwise there would be nothing holding it all the way up from there or from there. So I know what you're thinking, you haven't put the sprockets in. Yep, you're right. to get some glue down in that bit there I need to get some glue in that bit there but I want to get these sprockets in first so up front clip the wheel in there make sure we get it all that will actually the front will actually come apart enough for you to um for you to move the wheel so you can adjust the uh, Tension. I'll get it in the right opposing hole. There you go. So that's that one. So now it's the exhale. I'm going to put some glue in there to pull that joint down. clicking together. So there's that. And now we're going to put the rear sprocket in. Just pull it apart. Where's the holes? I'm trying to do this so you can see it and I can't bloody see it myself. And there we have it. So, I call it a good day there guys, because we've now got both of the main sides back to, uh, together, not back together, together. Um, as you can see here, there's the other one. So they're both together, um, all the wheels are in, the glue's gonna go hard. I'm gonna leave those for a little while to go off because the last thing I want is any of this coming apart. And I'm quite tempted to put a double glue on these um, wheel axles because they're not going to turn anyway you're not going to see them and they don't really do anything so um 
Yeah, so we'll call that a wrap for this one. This is uh, 18 or 19 parts now I've done for this uh, part seven. So I'll edit this later on and then get it on tonight. So you should have it uh, Monday, Monday morning. Uh, that'll be Monday the 15th, wouldn't it? Monday the 15th of October. So what are we now? Um, as of, what is it now? It's five past four. Uh, what are we now? About 68 hours. 68, 70 hours I started it. 70 hours ago I started this. Not 70 hours building time, but 70 hours in real time. So um, we're getting there. There's not much left. If you look at the box, um, all I've got is these few bits of odds and ends. There's one through there for the side turrets, which isn't touched. Oh, I forgot this one. Still sealed up. These are the tracks. <laughs> yeah. How many parts are there in here? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's thirty-six. There's forty there. So there's forty. There's one, two, three, four. So there's two hundred pads, and there's four of these per pad. So that means there's a thousand parts in here. Yeah. Yeah. Four times two hundred is eight hundred plus the two hundred. That means there's a thousand parts on these sprues. And they've all got to be uh, removed, cleaned up, denibbed, and then put together. <laughs> That's how the driver man crazy, isn't it? Anyway, oh, and all of these are different. None of those are interchangeable, they're all different. So yeah, that'd be some fun. So, if you like what you see, please subscribe. If you don't like what you see, please put a dislike and, and tell me why. Um, part eight will be up, hopefully tomorrow. Um, well, not tomorrow. I'll record tomorrow, and it'll be up Tuesday. If not, if there's no, if I don't do much on it tomorrow, um, there'll be something up on Wednesday for it. Uh, but no, um, thanks for looking, and um, please comment and uh, yeah, please just get all the comments down you can. I'm really interested to see what you guys are thinking about this. So uh, I'll speak to you all soon, and have a good night and enjoy your Monday. Bye.